In this webcast, we are going to show you a comparison of rigid body equations of motion for translation, rotation, and general plane motion. Our goal is that if we can see all the equations for translation, rotation, and general plane motion together, it will uh, be easier for us to apply and select the equations while solving the problem. So now let's talk about the translation first. Look at the image. We have the free body diagram and the kinetic diagram of this rigid body. So all the forces F1 to F3 acting on the body or there could be some moment acting on the body. And the resultant would be the kinetic, the motion diagram caused by this force and moment is the um, this diagram. It could be have a rectilinear acceleration which is showed by this uh, this rectilinear line and uh, for curvilinear translation we will have this curve showed by the green line. So the equations we will have is that the force, summation of force equals to ma about z. So why we're taking z? Remember for our particle of motion we used to have f equals to ma but when there's a system of particles meaning a rigid body then we assume that all the masses is acting uh, at the mass center g. So we assume uh, the acceleration of mass center g to use the equation of motion. Uh, so that for translation f equals to m a g can be written for uh, rectilinear motion x and y coordinate system and for curvilinear motion which is shown by the green line here. So for curvilinear motion you know there is normal and tangential component so we will have these two equations. And uh, the moment about uh, from the mass center G is always zero for translation because you see point Z here is the mass center. So when we assume the acceleration of Z that goes through the point Z, mass center Z, and even when we're for curvilinear motion, we when we assume the acceleration AG that also goes through the mass center G. So the moment is distance is zero so the moment about point z is zero so for translation the moment about z is always zero but if for any reason to solve the problem um, if we need more equation than two um, then we need we can use the kinetic moment or take a moment about any point p so here in the image you see i took random point p it could be here it could be here any point p um, if we take that um, so we can write this moment about point P equals to the moment kinetic moment about the same point P and uh, to look at the kinetic equation kinetic moment equation this is the equation in general equation for kinetic moment a uh, point P it may have the X component and Y component multiplied by the X bar and Y bar distance of that point from the mass center G and the angular acceleration. So for a translation, what will happen is that there is no acceleration. So our um, IG alpha will be always zero for a translation. So for a translation, if we ever use this uh, kinetic motion, equa um, kinetic moment equation, we may have only this AX and AY. And most likely in some cases the AY, if it's a horizontal uh, rectilinear motion, the AY will also be zero. So we may have to deal with only this part here. So now let's talk about the rotation part equations. So we still have the summation of force equals to mg and mg. So let's look at the free body diagram and kinetic diagram of body. So assume that this body uh, here is hinged uh, pin joint at the point O and same for the kinetic diagram we have the mass center G of the body acting and the body is experiencing an acceleration alpha uh, angular acceleration alpha and angular velocity omega a correction on the diagram um, on the free body diagram we will have the forces F1 F2 and F3 and then on the kinetic diagram we will have the alpha and omega angular acceleration and uh, velocity so in rotation we have a little bit of less equation than the translation but the uh, diagram could be a little more complex so for the uh, rotation we know that the summation of force is uh, could be in normal and tangential direction so uh, 
summation of force equals to m equals to m a g in normal and tangential component and we know that for angular acceleration we can replace um angular um uh, we can replace the acceleration with omega square uh, angular velocity with rg and we can also for say we can do same thing for the tangential force which is replaced by m alpha r g so if we take the moment about z which is mass center here um which would be equals to the moment kinetic moment about point z so um since the angular um tangential and normal acceleration component will go from z because we're using uh, mass center z so we'll only be left with if we take moment about um, point z the kinetic moment would be uh, iz the moment of inertia about point z multiplied by the angular acceleration now often you may or sometimes you may want to take moment any other point uh, other than z uh, which it could be o so for example for translation we took any other point p here anywhere but here for the rotation we can take the uh, point o the point where uh, the axis of rotation o to reduce uh, some variables to uh, make easier solving the problem so if and finally we came down to the general plane motion which is a combination of translation and rotation so we will have the summation of force equals to m a g we will have the x and y component from um, translation and instead of having a uh, moment about z is zero we'll have the rotation part because this is still rotating so we'll have a um, summation of moment about point z is i z alpha and uh, we can take moment about any point on the body which will be equals to a uh, summation of kinetic uh, moment about that point and we know the entire equation will be active because we have rotation now and we also have the translation and the uh, equation of kinetic moment is negative because we assume counter uh, counterclockwise positive uh, and here this will be um, positive so positive m a y z x bar and i z uh, alpha one last thing before we end this session is that if we have a, a circular shaped body or uniform disc that rolls on a rough surface without any slip we can take moment about the point ic remember we used ic uh, instantaneous center of zero velocity so if we take moment about the ic it will be again only equals to uh, ic the uh, moment of inertia about point ic and multiplied by the angular acceleration alpha since it's not um, without slip so we will not have the um, uh, translation tra translating uh, components we will only have the ic alpha so that is the most easiest comparison of translation, rotation, and general plane motion. So if you know which scenario your problem falls into, and you can choose the equations that you need to apply, um, and I think uh, it will be easier to choose from the equations for uh, the particular problem scenario. So in next class, we're going to solve problems on general plane motion and rotation about a fixed axis. Uh, but till then, uh, thank you.